And so remember, at this point, what I really wanted to do is I just want to unwrap the body, right? Tomorrow we'll kind of do a review lecture on the gear, right? So remember, you have your outliner up here. And I can just click on clab, uh, crab gear to turn the eyeball off. Shift I is actually isolate select, which can be a cool way to kind of uh, temporarily turn off visibility without turning it off. But um, in this case, we can just use the outliner, turn the eyeball off with crab gear. And of course, I can left click on the body. Right? You can do it in the outliner, but of course, you can always just left click on the body here. Remember, I'm in object mode, right? Four for the click key for object mode, right? Four. Now, in this case, obviously, we could unwrap the whole thing and then have all of the UVs asymmetrical, right? So that way, you could actually texture stuff on this side that won't be the same on that side. Um, you can mix and match, right? If a lot of it you want to be the same, you can have the UVs lay on top of that and then move parts off if you want to be different, right? That is, that is something you can do. Right, but we're gonna kind of keep it a little simpler for us, right? Uh, and just kind of unwrap half and mirror over half. Um, it'll make our texture have bigger bang for buck, right? Remember we talked about it the other day. Um, UV unwrapping. If you leave the UVs on top of each other, you lose asymmetry, right? You have to. The texture will be the same on both sides, but uh, you'll get bang for buck for the texture, right? The texture will act bigger, right? You're having a 2048 that's on both sides. So visually, it'll have the quality of a 4096, right? Twice the pixel size, right? Or texels, as uh, uh, they kind of talk about it in more modern context. Texture element. It's really just a fancy way to say pixel density, <laughs> right? Um, so, so for us, we're just going to keep it simple. Just you even wrap half, mirror it over. Uh, you will lose the ability to have unique texturing on each side, but. Uh, Gerald, Evelyn, right here. Right. Sorry, I'm just recording, guys. So, <laughs> all right, there we go. There we go. Okay. So, uh, at this point, like we said, basically what we want to do is, um, like I said, we're, we're going to sacrifice asymmetry to kind of get more texture resolution out of a, a smaller texture, right? Uh, you only have to have a 2048. And instead, it'll, it'll act like visually like a 486. But any combination is technically correct. There's no right or wrong in this instance. It's just uh, whatever the needs of your pipeline is, right? A Nintendo Switch game is going to be different and have different resources available to a PS5 game or a movie, right? Uh, like a film is going to go full asymmetrical, right? It's going to have, it'll even use UDIMs, where it'll actually use different quadrants for different parts of the UVs and textures. Um, a switch isn't necessarily going to do that, right? And it'll probably take advantage of um, UVs overlapping a lot more to maximize resolution at the sake of asymmetry. So these are kind of some of those things to just consider a little bit. Since this is our first project, we'll keep it simple that way. Now I'm going to hit three for face mode, right? Three for face mode, because I just want to delete this pretty easily down the center. Now you could, of course, select the edge down the center and kind of do some unwelding, right? There are some features. Um, that can allow you to kind of unweld or separate, right? You kind of can see if I go to edge mode and I select some edges, right click. Uh, you have things like edge split um, or split that can do some cool things. It's gonna be easier for us to just go to three for face mode. And remember, double left click, right? Just like an edge loop, if you double left click on an edge, it selects an edge loop. If you double left click on a face, it'll select a face loop. However, it does need to kind of have a bias for which direction, right? So I always kind of go closer to the edge in the direction, right? So if I want to go this direction, I should double click close to this edge. If I want to go this direction face loop wise, I should double click on one of those other edges, right? So you could give a pretty easy bias just by clicking closer to kind of an edge in the direction you want to go. Of course, delete, right? Delete key. Uh, in this case, I've already assigned some quick keys to faces and dissolve edges because I use those the most. But faces, right? Delete those. And then, of course, I could select a single face here. And remember, in your select menu is select linked, right? Now, I've assigned this to a different quick key because I use select linked a lot. And quite frankly, I find spacebar a cooler quick key for it than the right bracket key. 
But technically, when you go to look at it, you'll see, unless you've changed it already, it's right bracket. And that selects the linked polygons, right? So any polygons that are directly touching or merged at the vertex level, right, that are actually linked to this are here. So remember, this is one of those interesting things about objects is you can have one object and not have some of the polygons touch at all, right? So I'll delete those, delete faces, right? Delete and then pick faces. And that gives us half the model, right? So now what I want to do is I'm going to go to the UV editing workspace, right? Because now that I've got the model deleted half, I want to change my workspace from modeling, right, to UV editing, because that's what we're doing, right? Remember, UVs are essentially, basically, we kind of talked about this more directly in class. UVs are really just X and Y, right, X and Y in texture space, because really a texture is a two-dimensional image, right? A JPEG, a PNG, Targa, whatever format you're using. Um, and so what you have to do is create a version of this model that represents it but it's kind of peeled apart and flattened out to be two-dimensional. Uh, kind of like pulling clothing apart and then trying to lay the clothing out to be as smooth and wrinkle-free as possible. All right. Now, one of the things we can, of course, do pretty quickly is we do want to get ourselves a texture on this model so we could see distortion. Right. And one of the easiest ways is just going to be go to uh, kind of the little salmon colored right, which, which is a, a variation of red pinkish, right? It's kind of a red pinkish color. Uh, I'd say it's a little more on the red side than salmon, but it's kind of kind of reddish, right? It's at the very bottom of the modifier, the properties, right? Remember, this is outliner. This is properties. You just have a lot of different properties in these tabs here. The very bottom is kind of this reddish sphere. When you click on that, that brings up your material. Now, in this case, it's OK to just use the default material that's kind of on everything uh, because we're not specifically texture painting yet. We're not baking normal maps down yet for this guy. We haven't even sculpted, right? So what we really want is we just want to create a texture for this that's a checkerboard. That's going to allow us to see distortion, right? Now, the way you do that is, and you see there's lots of material properties here, right? Um, just to show this off briefly, remember, this is wireframe. This is shaded. That's texture or Eevee. And when you turn on viewport shading for Eevee, if I was to say turn up metallic, right? And then let's say turn down roughness. Or, sorry, roughness. See how we can get that to look pretty metal-like? Kind of a brushed metal or much more like a chrome. Now, we're not doing that right now. We will see it a little bit more later on when we get to kind of uh, doing some texturing on the armor for this guy. So we'll, we'll dabble a little bit with uh, that. We'll do some sculpting to kind of put some small little rivets on. We'll do a little bit of metallic paint for rivets, right? But Eevee itself, right? We have these kind of different shader displays here, right? Wireframe, shaded, Eevee. That's actually your kind of final render, but it's not really set up for cycles right now. So we'll talk about that later on. But that third one, right, it kind of looks like the material ball, right? Kind of the red ball here. Kind of looks like that. That is kind of your viewport shading. It's going to do material preview, and it's going to use Blender's real-time uh, rendering engine, Eevee. And Eevee is pretty darn good. And it's only going to get better when 3.0 comes out. They're eventually going to put hardware support or ray tracing in. It's going to be really cool. It's a pretty excellent little uh, real-time render, actually. And you can kind of see there that we have all these different material properties. But right now, I just want to throw in a texture. And I just want it to be in the color channel, right? So the very top here, right? The very top is actually the material here. And then there's kind of different um, kind of codes it's going to use and um, our, like, you know, code to do different effects for real time previews and all that stuff. Uh, but these are fine. The defaults here for us are fine. Uh, base color. Right? Base color is what we wanted. Now, you can actually change this color, right? Some of you guys have already experimented or explored. So you absolutely can change the color, right? Just through changing the color. But in this case, I actually wanted to plug a texture in. So you see there's this little dot, right? It's a yellow dot. Some of these have gray dots or purple dots. So you see there's kind of this little dot right next to base color. 
we left click on that. When we left click on that, you'll see that there is image texture. Obviously, there's some uh, procedural stuff like checkerboard you could use here, but that's more procedural. Um, it's easier to use the image texture for this because it'll automatically use the UVs. Uh, so we'll just go to image texture, right? And that'll pop this up right here. Now all of a sudden there's image texture here and you'll see below base color, it's kind of now opened up. There's some options here, but there's also the ability to create new or open. So we're gonna create new and now we can give it a name. In this case, we're okay with untitled. We want it to have pixels, right? 1024 is the default in Blender. That's 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. I want a little more resolution in this. So I'm gonna do 2048, right? So kind of double it. Uh, that's always a good rule. Uh, there's kind of this doubling that works well for scaling and uh, real-time processing and all that stuff. So like the next resolution up, that preset resolution people usually use is uh, 4096, right? Which is double 2048. Now in this case, it's not enough to set the resolution here. That's more pixels. It'll be a higher resolution texture. I also want to change the generated type from blank to UV grid, right? From blank to UV grid. Then when I hit OK, particularly if I have the viewport shading on, right? Not sh that one, but that one. So that one right there. You'll see, we see the checkerboard on here, but we can see it's not, it's kind of decent here, not perfect, but OK. It's really bad in these areas, right? But now we have a distortion grid on, right? And that's important, having that distortion grid on. So now what I need to do is I need to go do a few other things. Uh, one, uh, I'm gonna go to here, right? The little kind of uh, green triangle right above the material. I'm gonna open up UV maps so that I can uh, double left click on this UV map here and call it crab body. That way we can have distinctly named UVs. There we go. And what I want to do now is I'm actually going to go back to my regular shader, right? There's kind of a ball here that looks like it's kind of just wireframe. It's that one. Then there's one that's just solid white. That's regular shaded. Although you could actually use uh, matte caps and other things like that, but we'll talk about that when we get to sculpting. And then there's the next one over, which, like I said, kind of looks like the material ball, right? It kind of looks like it's got a bit of a checkerboard in it. That is the one that shows you your full textures, normal mapping. It's EV, basically. Um, and we'll see that comes into handy a lot more as we go along. Uh, particularly when we get to painting. So this is kind of a few of those little things that we've already talked about, and I'll be doing again tomorrow for our armor, right? So we've got a distortion grid on there. That lets us see if there's distortion, right? Wherever it looks pretty checkerboard, that's lower distortion. We're looking for that. Wherever it's a lot, a lot less grid-like, that's a lot of distortion. That's just going to make it so that whatever textures you have on there, even if it's sculpted normal map, uh, a, a normal map based on sculpt data, it's just not going to go on well, right? Um, so you always want to have low or zero distortion, right? So now what I need to do is I need to properly unwrap this. And that's where seams come in, right? Seams. So we need to be able to cut some seams on this model to unwrap it. Now, it's easier to see the seams just by going back to kind of regular shaded. And two, right? Two for edge mode, right? Two. Two for edge mode, because your seams are basically your edges or edge loops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to go in here and mark seams, right? Mark seams. So how do we do that? Well, part of it is you just double left click to select an edge loop, right? Two for edge mode. Double left click to select an edge loop. Remember, you can hold down shift to add. Shift, double left click to add another loop there. Uh, I probably want to add one to the shell here. So I'll just kind of shift double left click there, kind of break the shell off on its own. And I also kind of want the antenna to be off on its own. So shift double left click there. You could do it a little bit down on the base stock, but then you have to do a couple because it's kind of got the couple of stars here. But we'll be fine there. That'll give us a, a pretty good starting one, right? This is our first UV wrap. If it's good but not perfect, you're fine, right? It's, it's your first time doing it. Now, we kind of want to pop the arms off, the legs, right? The legs should be their own UVs, their own UV shells, uh, just like the antenna should and even the shell itself. So remember, to mark a seam, all you have to do is right-click, 
Remember, right click brings up your context menu. In this case, in this case, edge context. And you'll see that about a little bit more than halfway down is mark seam. A little more than halfway down, mark seam. And now you'll see those are red. Those have been turned into seams. Now what we need to do though is kind of add ourselves some better seams that go around this whole thing. Now, if we want even lower distortion, we might add a seam all the way through the leg because we got these little bends in here. Uh, might even be a good idea to maybe kind of set up a seam here and here just to kind of fully pop those off, right? So left, double left click, shift double left click, right click mark seam, just to kind of so that the, this leg and this part of the leg are their own objects. But we also need that kind of inseam, right? That seam that kind of goes from seam to seam, right? Remember, clothing is a really good kind of a follow for any character creature, right? Your pants have an inseam, right? There's generally a seam underneath your arm, right? If you look at a long sleeve shirt or even a short sleeve shirt, there's usually a little seam kind of on the bottom of your arm. Uh, just like there's usually a seam down the side of your shirt. So we need a seam like that. Now, there's a couple of ways to do that, right? We could left click and then shift left click on the same edge loop, right? And remember, in the select menu is select linked shortest path. Now, you see, I've assigned a quick key to that, but by default, it doesn't have one. What that does is it selects between them, the shortest path between them. So I could right click, mark seam. Of course, we do have some other tools in here, and we've seen these in some other videos, right? Where I could select an edge and then shift click on the edge next to it. So there's two next to each other. And remember, in the select menu, in select more and less, there's next active, previous active. And you'll see those do not have cookies by default, but I have added my own, right? They're similar to more and less, they're just working for edges or face loops, right? So they're kind of growing an edge over face loop instead of just doing a regular grow or shrink, right? More or less. So that's why I kind of added shift up arrow, shift down arrow, because they're similar enough that I'm like, hey, let's just use a shift variation of that. So next active grabs the next one, and then I can just keep shift, hitting shift up arrow. And you see how this can kind of take us around, right? To kind of get us a nice little unwrap for that. Shift down arrow, of course, will go back down. If I want to, I can go to here, shift left click, shift left click, shift up arrow to kind of add. So remember, in the select menu, there is the next and previous active, which are kind of like more or less, but for kind of an edge loop or a face loop, because those will, will work for face loops as well. You can even skip, and it will skip too. It's really, really cool. And then, of course, there is select link shortest path. You could also just manually or drag select those as well, right? Really, whatever way you want to select it. I'm just trying to make sure that you guys get to see that Blender actually has some pretty awesome selection tools. And you just need to know where they're at and what they can do. So right click, mark seam. And then, of course, I could, you know, maybe hit A to fit all, uh, fit, it, fit all, right? And then, of course, we can come back in here. I could shift left click on that one. You hit F for frame selection. There we go. And of course, I could shift left click on another edge along that same edge loop and do select link shortest path, right click, mark seam. And then, of course, if you want to use that grow one, right, left click, shift left click, so there's at least two. And remember, that's just select more or less next active, previous active. I'm just using my cookies for them. And then, of course, right click, mark scene. So, as you feel more comfortable with these tools, remember you do have next active, previous active, more or less, select link shortest path. You've got some great selection tools in here. I just, as we go, I want to make sure you get to, get to see them more, right? Technically, any way you want to select will work, though, as long as you can mark seams. And then, of course, what we'll do is we'll kind of do one uh, for the antenna here. So left click, shift left click, and then let's use my uh, next previous, you know, next active, right? Next active, so it's a great way to grow it. Right click, mark seam, and now we have all of our UV seams, right? 
So now all we have to do once we have those seams cut, and you see how it's kind of like the antenna's its own thing, and then it's kind of got this so it could peel open like a uh, kind of think about like a, a the label on a uh, um, the seam on a label for a bottle, except it's you know for arm or leg. Look at clothing. Look at your pants. Your pants have seams kind of down the inside leg and outside leg. Your your shirt sleeves do. The nice thing is you'll have this video to like point out where decent places to put seams are at. And now what I want to do is we'll kind of turn uh, the uh, material preview one on again, right? And I'm going to hit uh, three for face mode. Control A to select all the faces. And now you'll see there's actually UVs here. They're just poorly laid out, right? Remember, the UVs are actually already in the model. It's just that since you were modeling it, it didn't know how to lay the UVs out, so they're badly laid out. What we're really doing is we're relaying the UVs out, right? Relaying them out. So now with all the faces selected here, right? Three for face mode, control A for select all. But see, select all is actually a, a button here too, right? Just like invert is. And there's a UV menu, right? In the UV editor, right? Because we're in UV editing workspace. You'll notice that that brings up a normal viewport, but also kind of your UV editor itself, right? The 2D version of this. And there's a UV menu. And in that UV menu, there's an area called Unwrap. And there's an Unwrap feature right there. And then when we unwrap, look at that, right? And you notice how the other day I didn't put this seam in, and so we had more distortion there. But just by putting this extra little seam in there, right, by changing our seams up just a little bit here and adding one more through the kind of there, you notice now when you look at this checkerboard, it looks on every part of the model pretty darn checkerboard, right? You might have a little bit of distortion up here, so maybe you could continue to seam through a little more, right? But remember, some distortion is not the end of the world with 3D projection painting, and that will compensate for some of it. So you're usually looking for low or zero. And on your first model, if you have a little bit of distortion on the top of your antenna, no big deal, right? But that's what we're looking for, right? We can actually look at that model and see that that checkerboard is looking pretty good. And you'll see right in here that we've now, if I go to four, for object mode here, right? So you actually, uh, your selection keys will work here too, right? Two for edge mode. You double left click to select an edge loop. Four is a uh, kind of object, but that kind of works for shells. And you see there's one of your legs, there's one of your legs, right? Your shell, your body, your antenna. And so you can see that these look like these versions, but they're kind of peeled out and flattened, like really like the pelt of an animal, right? Some software calls this pelt mapping, right? And that is UV unwrapping. All right, I think that'll be a great place to stop that recording for now.